Hello everyone, it's Elena and today I'm going to show you guys my Notion setup and how I use Notion as a student to keep track of my deadlines, my reading lists and other stuff. Notion is an amazing productivity and note-taking app but it can be a little overwhelming at first but once you get the hang of it, it is super useful. I've talked about Notion before and I've used the app for years and I can't believe that I'm saying this but this video is actually sponsored by Notion. Thank you so much to the Notion team for sponsoring this video and let's get straight into my Notion setup. This is also an absolute beginner's tutorial so I'm going to show you guys how I did everything in the setup so that you can then also create your own Notion setup. So this is what my Notion looks like when you open it up and my starting page basically leads you to other pages. In Notion you can create as many pages as you want and you can see them on the sidebar. And you can create sub pages within pages so a page can basically act like a folder because it can contain as many sub pages as you want. My starting page on the one hand contains some information like the weather forecast, a clock and other stuff, but then it also contains links to two other pages, law school and social media. And those two pages are basically like massive folders that then again contain lots of sub pages for all of my organizations. So things like my content calendar for YouTube or things like my reading lists for different subjects. I'm going to focus on how I use Notion as a student, so we're only going to take a look at the law school section. But let's first stick with the starting page. So on there we have some widgets. So the widgets are the water counter, so there I just keep track of how much water I'm drinking because I tend to forget to drink enough and it's not great. Then I also have a clock, the weather forecast and a countdown to when I'm going back to Cambridge so that I remember to finish everything on my reading list for the summer before that countdown goes down to zero. You can embed things into your Notion pages and all of these widgets are embedded. I created them with Indify so you can just pick the widget that you want to create on Indify, then you can customize it and then just copy the link, add it to your Notion page and then choose that you want to embed it. And I also created columns on my starting page. So normally when you start a page in Notion it won't have columns, but if you want to create a column just drag the item that you want to add to a new column to the side and when this vertical blue line appears then you let it go and then you've created a column. And that's how I pulled all of these widgets into the right place and of course you can also adjust their size however you want on the page. One little warning about these widgets from Indify, they are amazing if you're using Notion on your laptop. They don't look so great on um, devices like your phone or your iPad. Um, some of these don't really match the format, um, but there are a ton of other widgets for Notion out there so you can just find something that fits your needs. But for me, I mainly use Notion on my laptop so that really doesn't bother me. Then on my starting page I also have a quote that I find quite motivational and if you scroll down you actually find my massive to-do list which is separated by categories. So first we have my law school to-do list since it's my biggest priority. If I ever want to highlight something within that list because it's very important or urgent then I can just click on the dots in front of a text item and highlight the entire line. Or if I only want to highlight something specific of a text I can just select that part of the text and then highlight only that. Then I also have a social media to-do list and a random stuff to-do list. Random stuff is things like for example scheduling a doctor's appointment. Those are just things which don't really match any other category and so I just put it there. And then I also have a to-do list for my summer job. And that's my starting page. So my starting page is really just an overview of things that I have to do. And then I can go into the specific category in which I want to work. So I have a law school or social media. And we're going to take a look at my law school page. So this page basically acts like a folder, it just directs you to other pages. So I have pages for all of my courses and in case anyone's wondering what subjects I'm taking, there it is. Those are my third year subjects. And all of these subject pages are structured in exactly the same way except for my dissertation page. That one is still empty because I'm honestly not entirely sure yet how I'm going to organize writing my dissertation. So I first want to figure out a good organization system and then I'm going to set up that page. But all the other course pages are set up in exactly the same way. So let's just take a look at the equity page as an example. These pages are divided into two categories, an overview and then the reading list. So the overview is just a to-do list with the different items of the course. So the summer reading list and then the different supervisions. And if you ever want to create a to-do list or any other kind of list in Notion, you can just use slash commands to do so. So just write slash and then what you want to create. So you can just write to-do list there and then you will get these tick boxes. And so I created this to-do list to have an overview of where I'm at in the course. So have I finished all the readings for supervision free? Great, then I can move on to the next supervision and work on the readings for that. And if I want to get to the specific reading list, then I go down to the second category on the page. And here I used a toggle list. Again, you can create that with a slash command. And what it means is that you can just 
click on the toggle and then it will expand and it will show you the entire reading list. And within that toggle list expansion, I then used again a to-do list so that I can tick off any readings that I've already done. And those are my course pages. Very simple, but I think it's an effective overview to know where you are on the course and what you still need to get done. So let's get back to that law school page. I also have a category for deadlines so that I will always have an overview of when I will have to hand in my next essay so that I won't forget about it. And then I had some space left and so I just added another quote that I like. And then at the bottom I have some other categories which aren't directly related to my subject but which are still related to law school. So first up we have law related books and articles. Those are books and articles that I've read that aren't on the syllabus but that I think could be useful and so I store all of my notes on them in Notion because Notion is very easily searchable and that way I also know where I can find all of the notes on these things that I've just read for fun because I might want to use that knowledge when I later on write an essay or something. So if we for example click on Bingham's The Rule of Law you're going to get to my detailed notes about the book. And by the way, you can always create a subpage either by creating a new page for the sidebar and then just dragging that page to the page in which you want it to become a subpage. Or alternatively, you can just select any of the text which you want to become the title of your page and then just say turn into page and then you have a subpage. And then going back to this main page about books and articles, I also added a toggle list under the link to the page with my detailed notes about the book and I use this toggle list for key takeaways. So for example for Bingham's The Rule of Law, my key takeaway were the eight principles that he suggests form the rule of law and then I also keep the footnote there. Now I have this as a toggle list so that, you know, the list of books and articles doesn't become unnecessarily long and complicated so that I can't find anything in there anymore. So I find it easier to have it as a toggle list which you can expand if you want to read it. Um, and I keep the footnote there as well because I'm someone who hates making footnotes and so when the footnote is already done it's just so much easier for me to decide that I'm going to use the knowledge and cite it because, yeah, I just hate making footnotes. It's an absolute pet peeve of mine, but I know it's necessary. Going back to the law school page, we also have a page about outfit plans. And here I embedded a weather forecast, again done with Indify, and then I just have this basic table with Monday to Sunday and then just my outfits. I edit the weather forecast because you need to know what the weather is going to be like in order to plan your outfits. And personally, um, I tend to spend a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to wear if I leave it to the morning. So instead, I will plan my outfits on Sunday evening and then I just have to grab whatever I plan to wear. And that has made it so much easier for me to decide. Next, we have my TBRs so my list of books that I want to read. This isn't directly related to law school because these are books that I want to read for fun. But I think free time is also part of, you know, whatever you're studying and it's important that you make time for that. And I just think Notion is a great place to keep your TBR list because in Notion it's so easy to create, for example, a to-do list so that you can tick off any books that you've already read and you can add as many books to that list as you want as you can basically keep this page going on forever. So I think it's a good place for a TBR. And lastly, we have a habit tracker. So here I try to motivate myself to do things that I often forget to do, but I think they would be good for me. And so I have this habit tracker to basically have a little competition with myself, um, you know, to manage to always tick all the boxes so that my habit tracker looks nice. So the first category here is working out. I have been prescribed exercises for my back, but I tend not to do them because I'm lazy and that's not great. So that's why I put it into my habit tracker. Then next we have reading for fun. I sometimes just kind of like get so stressed that I think I don't have time for it, but I think it's important to make time for your hobbies and so I also put it there. And um, then also writing my diary. Writing in my diary is something that I've realized really helps me a lot but it's something that I often just don't do. I kind of forget about it. And the same goes for short meditations. So here we're talking like five to 10 minute meditations with an app. And yeah, that is my Notion setup. I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you guys want to use Notion, then you can sign up with the link in the description box below. Notion is completely free for students. And if you want to use the same Notion setup that I used, then you can just click the link in the description box below that leads you to my Notion page. And then you can just click duplicate and then it is a part of your workspace and you can customize it however you want to. Thank you so much to the Notion team for sponsoring this video and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Have a nice day. Bye!